Good morning. It's my eighth week at the Marie Curie Institute, and I love my job. I love Paris, actually. But today, I'm thinking about my family back home in Nairobi, because there's been bad news. It turns out it's not tuberculosis; it's lung cancer. And it's stage four, and it's my favorite aunt. Heading home to my apartment, I'm feeling sad and confused because I know enough to know. I've spent eight years of my career working on this topic, so I know. I know how serious this is. I also know that her best shot. Is to leave Kenya. In my mind, we've got to get her to the Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York, and possibly on an immunotherapy clinical trial. But there would be heavy costs associated with this, and precious time away from family. So after realizing with my family that it's not practical to send her to New York or London. Or Mumbai, where some of these treatments are most likely to be available, we, like many Kenyan families, decide to look for options in Kenya. But there's only 14 oncologists in Kenya. There's 48 million people in Kenya determined to find her the best treatment. So my family trusts me to lead the charge, because you know I am an immuno oncologist. A field of research that aims to reprogram the immune system so that it can directly fight cancer. These days, all the newspapers and journals are touting this new field of research as the next best hope for cancer treatment. It's called immunotherapy. In fact, the field is so new and revolutionary that the very first immunotherapy drugs were only approved by the FDA in 2011. My research is on bladder cancer. You see, today bladder cancer is treated using the tuberculosis vaccine, and it works in 70% of people. But we still don't fully understand why. So my job is to explore whether certain kinds of cell, called mate cells, are responsible for the successful treatment of this cancer. Today I'm thinking about immunotherapy, but for lung cancer. And how can my aunt get access to this treatment? Does it even matter to my aunt, to a Kenyan, to any African really, that I'm working on immunotherapy? That I'm among a group of researchers that are advancing the field of cancer research, that are finding the latest treatments in immunotherapy. Does it matter to the Africans on the continent that some of their people are working abroad on these very questions? And I'm deeply dissatisfied with the order of things, because it seems to me unbelievably unfair that no matter what I do, my work, my discoveries, my contributions to the field will help my country and my continent last. So over time, it was driving me crazy that I didn't know how many of us are actually out there, how many immunologists, how many cardiologists, how many surgeons. How would I even go about finding that out? That was in 2012. I would spend years brainstorming this problem of not knowing. I wasn't going to quit my job. I just started. But yet, I was still incredibly moved and driven to map this seemingly invisible network of African expertise that's all over the world. I was already in my job collaborating with Australian scientists who lived in Australia and whom I'd never met, and so I kept wondering why can't I do the same research, collaborative research, with Kenyan researchers, or Zimbabwean researchers, or Nigerian ones, and how could we find each other? And collaborate on shared interests. And so, in 2016, I took a giant leap. 
away from the Curie Institute and launched a platform called Made in Africa. Our very first mission is to map every African scientist and health professional on the planet. Because I want to know who is doing what and who is doing it where. It turns out, we later found, that there are more Kenyan oncologists in the UK and in the US than there are in Kenya. And that there are more Beninois doctors in France than there are in Benin. And that there are more Nigerian doctors in, well, you get where I'm going with this. Made in Africa is also a digital meeting place where researchers and health professionals in Africa can connect to African researchers all over the world. With 192 countries and 7.5 billion people on the planet, you can imagine that collecting and processing this data into usable insights is an all-consuming process. But I wake up every day excited and hopeful because this is one of the most human problems that big data and artificial intelligence can solve. And that gets to the heart of my mission. We are creating comprehensive profiles, detailed identities of African researchers in every field of expertise and clinical practice. And we're building the artificial intelligence that will help us quickly identify and mobilize African voices to address any health issue on the continent. Collaborations, we spoke about that. Hematologists and cardiologists that work on sickle cell anemia, for example. Immunologists working on malaria, multi-drug resistant tuberculosis, sleeping sickness, getting more scientists and funding into tropical diseases that are often relegated as African problems and often ignored by the rest of the world. But then I wonder, can I do this? And why me? And I realize I don't have to be alone. I cannot do it alone, but we can do it together. We can do everything with the data and the cyber networks and the artificial intelligence and the analysis of all these. But in the end, it is you, the humans, that must power the platform. How many of you know someone who works in science or health? Stand up. You're a scientist, you know a scientist, you know a doctor, you know a, a nurse. You, my friends, must mobilize the community around you. You must get them, the policy makers, the scientists, the doctors, the nurses, those that are here and those that are abroad. And you must get them moving to join me so that we can transform Africa together. The countdown begins. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mboru.